Well, summer is here. And you either love summer and all the heat that it brings, or yeah, not so fond of it and can't wait for it to be gone. For those of you that love summer, I have a little letter from you for you that I found on a devotional. So I'm going to read that to you now. I think it's really, really cute. So it says, it's just really quick. It says, Dear Summer, I love you. You have given me weekends at the lake, endless dinners on the grill, pool dates with friends, scattered flip-flops everywhere, bonfires, sticky s'mores, and so much more. You have nursed my broken heart more than once through the years with gifts of sunshine and ice cream. Each year you come back again to help me write another incredible story. Thank you. Hugs and kisses, Sarah. This was the beginning of a devotional about summer. And I uh, also kind of went into, I, I don't know where Sarah went on her devotional. I stopped there because I just thought that the letter was really cute. I've never thought about sending a Dear Summer letter. Now, I am one of those that doesn't love the heat. I do like summer because there are things that I like doing outside that summer enhances. But the heat, I'm not as fond of. Now, if I could stay in the water the whole time, I would be more fond of it. But I want to go to a different direction because after all, this is a devotional where we're supposed to be thinking about God. A lot of times during the summer, we have so many other things that we are doing because the kids are out of school or we are uh, more laid back at home and we have more time to do things on the weekends. So what happens is we get pulled away from church or pulled away from small groups or Bible studies that go on during the summer. And we also, when that happens, we also don't tithe as much because if you're not at church, a lot of people don't tithe as much. Now, you may be one of those that sends in your tithe every week or it's automatically comes out of your account and that's amazing. But during the summer, we kind of get laxed, not just with loosening up things at home, but also with our spiritual lives. And so I want to challenge you this year for that not to happen. So we can loosen things up, stay up a little bit later in the evenings because we don't, the kids don't have to go to school the next day. We don't have to get up as early to prepare lunches to get them to school. So there are some things that happen. Maybe there's more vacations planned, things that happen that are fun. But we also want to remember to keep our eye on God through the summer. Last week, I talked it about, I, I spoke about being addicted to things of this world. And summer can be pretty addictive. Don't let the days of lazy, hazy summer draw you in so much that you're addicted to it more than you are to God. So this is a great time this week to start putting some plans in motion for what you're going to do to spiritually stay grounded and gain strength through the summer. I invite you to put a plan into action, maybe on your uh, weekly agenda, or if you have a whiteboard at home, a whiteboard, or if you have uh, the lady in the box, I'm not going to say her name, A-L-E-X-A, because she'll start talking during this devotional, but you can set a reminder with the lady in the box so that she can remind you to daily do a devotional or to uh, spend some more time with God during the summer. So I encourage you to build better habits and not let the addiction of summer draw you away from God. Have a blessed week and definitely enjoy your summer. God bless.